Sunglasses FD Yathi. Now the new nickname. Um yeah, I was thinking that I would make uh you know a gaming video but uh I really wanted to do that but uh the <laughs> the retro Xbox uh, controller came dead. I'm gonna send it to my uh, Russian born, like a Finnish speaking friend, he can actually fix it. I got a good friend in the central Finland. So, uh, today's topic will not be gaming, but uh, it will involve death, it will involve Russia, and it will, it will involve my relative Matti Haapojan. Finland's most notorious murder man. See, he's called. And I have read this. Um, it's a like study since uh, Matti Haapoja. Um, he lived in uh, like uh, like uh, in like uh, how would you? Say one eight four five and one and uh, died at one eight nine five. So he lived at the same time as Jack the Ripper. So I have read this uh, study that is made by Caius Eravasti and is uh, like uh, has made a study of a book that. Uh, Matti Haapoja wrote. The book is called uh, Murder Man uh, Portrait of a Murder Man Yeah, so I haven't read the actual book, but uh, when I used to live in central Finland the city where I lived in uh, actually had the study uh, on the library, so I was lucky to get to read that if you can say it. Yet you are lucky if there is a serial killer in your family. So, um, let's get the show on the road. Uh, I want to make few things clear. So, uh, I'm like Matti Haapoja did not have any like uh, children that we know of, and like uh, I'm related to him. He's uh, from my mother's side family and he's like a distant relative of mine but I'm like totally related to him and um, there is this uh, one uh, thing that uh, Caius Eros said he's still uh, like not a psychiatrist but he is uh, like a he studies history so He's not an expert, but he said in his study that uh, if uh, Matti Haapoja would be diagnosed today, he would be diagnosed as a uh, um, psychosis-oriented personality disorder. And I've been diagnosed with psychosis-oriented personality disorder. And I have like uh, two sibl younger siblings that my sisters. The younger has HD, HD. Older has uh, ADD, and her son has HD, HD. And my younger brother has had like reading disorder, so it's like a concentration concentration disorder, probably. Probably HD, HD. So I got those two. Maybe the Harpoya also. But um, okay. That's enough of me. I haven't killed anyone. And let's talk about my family member Matti Harpoya, who has killed a lot of people. Okay. So I read the book. I quickly took some notes. And so to remind myself, I took some poo 
pictures of the book and I read them, so some of my sources are from the internet and some of are from the study by Caius Erlasti. Okay, so let's start again. So Matti Hapoja was born uh, like uh, 16th uh, September 1845 in Isokura, Finland, and he would die 8th of January 1895 in Turku, Finland. Um, when he was young, Matti Haapoja got like uh, relentlessly beaten by his alcoholic father and he got also uh, viciously beaten by his... Ya uh, oh ya oh, I'm sorry, I'm mixing this but I'm telling you soon why. His older brother Juho and my younger brother is Juho but he's almost a head uh, taller than me but... Uh, and uh, we have um, like had a couple of fights, but well, only one that resulted in like fists uh, being swung. And I hit first, but he threw me to the floor first. So uh, that's one of the reasons why I like have this uh, scar here. Yeah, it's showing uh, like this part was that made like this ring when he hit me and like uh, other is just like there was this this uh, strange uh, how would you say ooze, oozing thing that like uh, I used like cream powder that made like a like pimple that was size of a thumb that was there for a year I treated with uh, uh, what is it? But, uh, oh, I can't remember. It starts with C. It's just some. What it is? Uh, it's clove. Ah, uh, I'm making myself a clown. I'm speaking of a different thing, but uh, it's not clove. It's oil, but uh, some something like that. I don't remember the natural product, but I. Clover oil, yeah, I treated with clover oil, and there stayed like under the skin this oozing, like some kind of like a thing that was left after the pimple, and I got it cut. So that's why I got this scar, Monkey D. Luffy's scar from One Piece. And yeah, back to the topic. Uh, so. Uh, this is uh, why Matti Haapoja says that he became like a out of ordinary person, uh, that he uh, got too much beating due to his alcoholic father Heikki. The Heikki would be like a real alcoholic, no one could go near him and he would beat everyone and like there would have been uh, like uh, like people tried to intervene, he would have a, like a axe in hand, and so the townsmen, because he was like a, just going on a rampage on his own home, and Matti was forced to keep light for him, up, uh, like up, so that he could see how what to trash. So the people started to hit him with like long sticks and one got uh, like good smack on the head so that stopped that but when uh, Juho got older uh, he wanted to have the farm for himself so he beat Matti like uh, even worse than his father because he needed to like get Matti in line so that he would be the definite owner of the farm. Okay, that he was his childhood. Um, so um, this is the same time when Jack the Ripper was active. Uh, not not this time when, uh, when he was young. Since uh, uh, Jack the Ripper uh, was like uh, active. Uh, I don't remember <laughs> exactly. When, but uh, since I didn't put it 
up, but uh, it was 1888 when uh, like the canonical five murders that are attributed to Jack the Ripper like uh, had been done. So I don't, I, I didn't put when it started, but at, they lived at the same time and we were, were about the same age. Um, so, uh, Matti Hapoya's murders are like a uh, police says it's, uh, it was when I last time I read it, it was 20, but uh, 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 now that I read it on the internet, the police has like uh, raised it to 2020 to 25 and and only three of those are confirmed and what Caius uh, Ervasti says the, uh, who wrote the study of uh, Matti's uh, book he is thinking that the police was exacerbating when Sorry about my pronunciation, but uh, they were exaggerating when uh, they were talking about uh, 20 murders. Like Caius uh, Erasti thinks that 10 is pro most probable number of the murders, but uh, yeah, three are like 100% his murders. And he tried to shoot the police when he was trying to ca be captured, so that was kind of... Uh, if the bullet had hit, then that would have been a murder. But, uh, well, uh, he got to, like, uh, to a criminal life. He was pretty deep in this criminal life. Uh, in his, in his uh, like, final, uh, like before he got to, uh, to a jail uh, for the final time. He was uh, like uh, dreaming of moving to America and starting a honest life. We can't exactly be sure if he would be able to start an honest life, but uh, since uh, he wasn't an honest guy, but uh, he, uh, well, um, it was his dream to get to America. Uh, so, this is a time in Finland when there was this, you could call it peasant uprising in uh, like area called Pohjanmaa, translates roughly to bottoms land, not like a like ours bottom, <laughs> but like uh, bottom of a well, like that, like bottom. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so um, I have been uh, like raised in Pohjanmaa, in bottoms land. Uh, my parents have not been born there, they were there for work and so I kind of lived in the same area where uh, Matti Hapoja also lived and my grandmother actually lives in uh, like uh, n even nearer where uh, Matti Hapoja like uh, from my, my grandmother from my mother's side used to live just passed away uh, even nearer in bottoms land where uh, like uh, Matti Hapoja lived since, well, I, his, my family and my family used to live in, my mother's side family used to live in that area. More about that in later. So there was this uprising of uh, peasants. Yeah. It was, uh, I can tell you, like, in nutshell, there was like a huge thing when you would uh, want to get married, you wouldn't need to like pay the family, the, like, well, the father of uh, the bride, like, 
something like really great. You needed to be like a successful man. You needed to have your own farm in Pohema. Pohema is very like flat. There is so much uh, like uh, farmland in Pohema and there is like floods even because it's so flat. The earth there, flat earth theory is true in Pohema in bottoms land. But um, yeah, so um, the it was like really hard to you needed to work really hard to to be able to get married. So um, the peasant youth started to rebel against it, and there is like this uh, because uh, they started like. I got to tell you before, uh, there was like this, uh, it's like a um, traditional costume of the Pohema. So it has like a belt called a Helavir. Uh, and this, uh, this belt has two knives on it. One is a butter knife, a small knife, and the other is uh, like a utility knife. But yeah. There where everyone was carrying a knife. And you can understand that when these young people would... Uh, they didn't want to wait for marriage, they didn't want to wait to get rich. So they started to do night runs as they were called. So they would like have free sex with the, the boys and the girls in the night in the barns. And if uh, like um, family's uh, father would catch the daughter, like on the act, he would have a, a knife hanging on his hip all the time. So you can understand that there was always uh, like uh, the how ang angry that father would be. Like there was always danger for these uh, rebellious youth. To to get stabbed or at least be like a, um, like a threatened to be stabbed so um, they uh, made like um, how would you say it they formed not it's not a rebellion but it became really big gang so it was called Puko Junker uh, it's in Swedish, it's Knivjunkaren, but uh, in English it's just, since there is no word in English for Junkari and there is no like explanation exactly in Finnish what it means, but it's knife fighters, because they would fight with the traditional knives, and this was like a response do the aggression from the fathers of the daughters of uh, who the uh, rebellious uh, peasant youth would uh, visit in the nights to have free sex. So, um, like uh, they uh, they were since they were met with aggression, they started to form gangs to be, to like like. Uh, make the fathers afraid. Okay, this guy is part of the Puko Junkarit gang or the Puko Junkarit movement, Puko Junkarit uh, peasant rebellion. He's, he, if I raise my knife against him, he will attack me with the knife. And knife fights started like the, the criminality skyrocketed because of that, because they started to rebel basically again raging against machine also like it started to become like straight out criminality it was so uh, accepted in the youth that you were part of this movement well if you are promised free sex and like protection <laughs> not like protection from in, with sex, but protection from the angry fathers because they can't uh, raise a mob to get you since you have a gang behind you, like 
<laughs> that was a really good deal for these youths. So, um, otherwise they would have like to work for years to get to a position when they could maybe get the girl that they want if some other man doesn't get the girl first. Yeah. So uh, that was the thing what was happening in Finland and there was these um, two figures that have still a song about them. Matti Haapuja, there was many songs about him, but they are not kind of like stayed in the Finnish minds. They were more like news when they were sung. They would tell what Matti Haapuja has done. But there was this uh, gang leader called Isontalon Antti and then there was this uh, another gang leader called Rannan Järvi. These are like big names in the Pukko Junkari gang. But uh, so Matti Hapoja was like uh, looking up to this gang and, and uh, he was like ambitious. Uh, he talked about Ison Talon Antti. He said that uh, Ison Talon, and this is a direct quote from Matti Haapoja. So Matti Haapoja said that Ison Talon Antti is a king in... Uh, uh, sorry, was where it was <laughs> again. Uh, ha in Harama, in, in Bottoms land. And so... Uh, Matti Haapel said that since he's king in Harma, I need to be king in Ylistara where he was living. Okay, so Matti Haapoja started his uh, spree of crime and like uh, there is like uh, the first murder that uh, happened and Matti Haapoja was like asked to be in a wedding as a like security man he brought his sister to the wedding and one of his friends his childhood friends probably had too much to drink started to like uh, badmouth uh, Matti Haapoja's sister and Matti Haapoja because Matti Haapoja had uh, dark hair for a Finnish man like uh, even Matti Haapoja knew and I knew that my f mother's side family came from Sweden uh, but uh, like uh, that could be the reason why the hair was pretty dark but uh, since Finnish people are like uh, mostly blonde and blue-eyed and like 99% uh, on par with Estonia and the highest percentage of blue-eyed people live here so and uh, like the sister was called Maria and she was uh, called like uh, a gypsy woman and uh, all that kind so what Matti did is he uh, waited his time probably drank and when he, the dance started he like stabbed the guy while dancing and tried to act like oh what is wrong with you and with everyone else but everyone knew who it was everyone knew who was angry at who and even the Maria sister did uh, in court did uh, actually like um, testify against Matti Haapoja so this childhood French name was Heikki Imponen he was a farmer yes and that is the first kill and that starts the series of kills and like uh, Matti Haapoja started to like rob people he would still use the knife and there was like a uh, there is this uh, strange luck that he had since he was able in the years of uh, like 8071 
from there to 1879 Matti Haapoja was so, like successfully uh, got gotten out of jail like a, a, a proper prison break four times so he could uh, like uh, continue uh, robbing people and fighting but uh, there isn't like we don't know what happened did every anyone die did anyone get injured no but we know that he robbed people he would steal horses everything illegal and uh, Matti Halpoja was like uh, asking maybe that he could be transferred to Siberia Siberia was uh, like taking Finnish prisoners there were so many Finnish prisoners that they even had a, like a song inside about Siberia where they would like the song would tell about them like staring at the distance without nothing to do basically but Matti Haapoja wanted to see Berias because uh, the security around him had because he had become notorious is like getting tighter so uh, he was able to escape in Russia in Siberia Matti Haapoja spent 10 years in Siberia and but he still um, came back to Finland with a horse and he was forced to leave Siberia when he was asked uh, why he came back and he was forced because he, in his own words uh, because of uh, many ill deeds that he had done so he was like known murderer or known criminal there or he had like maybe mm, made angry someone rich or powerful or some, some like uh, another criminal or or the Russian government had gotten like beef of him that there he is okay so he returned to Finland we don't know how many people he robbed or killed in Russia but he had at this time he didn't anymore use the knife in Russia he started this uh, that the, like um, even the papers uh, were talking about how Matti Haapoja would bring uh, people to Abraham's the biblical Abraham's to his uh, like uh, feet like the, or like uh, not, not his feet but the cloth that is on his feet on his I don't know the word in English like what is that cloak on the feet of his cloak yeah and what kind of way Matti Haapoja used to kill his victims in Russia was uh, that he would befriend Russian people would drink with them and when the night was like, uh, like uh, it was when it was, when it was night and it was about like to call the quits, he would find a secluded place. Like when the opportunity came, he would uh, pull a, a revolver pistol and he would shoot the Russian man in the back and steal all his belongings. Okay, so but mm, this lifestyle got Matti Haapoja to get back to Finland. And when he Matti Haapoja returned to Finland, he had changed. Something had changed. He made a murder that uh, was not uh, like uh, the old Matti Haapoja who was uh, like. Uh, just a gang member and like a tough guy who would uh, like uh, uh, resist arrest even try to shoot police would always be like a uh, mocking police and uh, authority and would like fight with a knife you know he was like uh, he had gotten cold I think he had done really bad things and that had changed him 
So there is one time even when uh, in Finland Matti Haapoja was going to get arrested and he tried to unlike himself. Um, he had a knife and as the police were trying to catch him he tried to uh, hit his own heart with the knife and he missed by like a couple of millimeters like seriously it was almost a direct hit and he survived that and got to jail but um, he was even asked if he wanted to become a police officer one time but uh, he was like no I have this gang that I'm part of and I can't do it because I have friends in there so um, but uh, now let's get back to the new Matti Haapoja so um, in 18090 there was this uh, prostitute called Jemina Salonen Jemina Salonen and Matti had an evening with her and there was a lot of lying about this Matti was like she stole from me and like uh, but in the end what happened is that Matti Haapoja strangled this prostitute and uh, he was like when he was asked if you do you did you want to rob the prostitute he was saying yes but uh, but then he was like asked but why did you kill her uh, Matti said like direct quote that uh, if I even was wiser I couldn't answer why I murdered her uh, but I can say with pride at, that I have murdered so this shows what kind of Matti was he was like before he was like mocking and like uh, mocking extremely much the courts every time and he had, li had this sardonic behavior always but now it was cold like he was proud to be a murderer yes so um, there was this time like uh, when uh, there is was this uh, Matilda Reed uh, like a um, noble woman who like visited prisoners and she got they were trying to get them to Christian belief and she got Matti to Christian belief or it was just uh, like a, a play on the Matti's part this is when Matti Hapia wrote the memoirs of the murder man and it, it was in an attempt that uh, uh, he would be sent back to uh, like uh, sent back to the uh, Siberian probably so that he could uh, like get uh, out of jail again get free <laughs> get out of jail card but no they wouldn't let him go because they were afraid that he would get loose again so um, in the like uh, when this uh, uh, killing of Yemina Salonen came into Finnish papers there they were talking about Jack the Ripper since uh, Matti Haapoja's killings were uh, quite similar when uh, like prostitute was killed so um, in like uh, there was this article about Matti and then there was article about like fresh article they lived in the same era like, same time Victorian era and like uh, the Finnish press would call Jack the Ripper uh, Jack the Splitter uh, that was the name then but uh, Finnish people never got it right so now they are calling like Jack the Slasher Jack the Ripper 
and yeah so um Matti Haapo ja got uh, like 180-91 he got death sentence in Finland we don't have death sentence anymore but his death sentence was like uh, it was uh, turned to like um, labor prison for life and lab hard labor and he needed to be like uh, separated from the other inmates so uh, so I did tell you I want to tell you still that Matti Haapoja knew that he's like my I knew that my family is from Sweden and like uh, he would tell when the court was asking that he's like uh, or in his book or that his like uh, family has crossed this uh, line like, like a Finnish uh, line between Sweden and they were like lumberjacks and this is this is true and like uh, there was this um, family called Streng that came with my family from mother's side and we uh, when we uh, crossed the border we lost our last name. We got last name Spanger, that means belt buckle. And well, when uh, my mother's family crossed to Finland, we uh, like <laughs> our family history was lost before that. So uh, the like uh, the family that Matti Haapoja came from was like with the Strang family because they are. Uh, Together were first to populate area called Veteli in Finland, so they are like were really big family. Like uh, uh, on this day and age, uh, like my mother's side family is Bangar and the Strang family have like uh, since they have been like uh, marrying their daughters and sons to each other. These families, so they are keeping. Uh, same history books of the family, so we are like uh, holding Finland's most biggest uh, family meeting and uh, like press sometimes makes some kind of like thing about that. That's how I learned about Matti. But let's get Matti's story to an end. So, because Matti didn't get his uh, pass to uh, Siberia. He started to like, uh, well, the Christianity thing, I guess it didn't hold since he started to tell people that he would escape the Finnish prison. And he told it about two weeks that he would escape the prison. And he had like constant surveillance. And because he was a special prisoner since he was Finland's most notorious murder man as he was called so um, what he did was uh, that he drew I think he was like almost 50 at this day and age I should count that I, uh, but I remember uh, <laughs> like it was said almost 50 at this time that's pretty old for a man at that day and age like when Jack the Ripper and what not were uh, alive but uh, he was pretty old at this time he um, went to the courtyard of the prison he had like like just like in the comics he had um, like uh, sheets tied together and he tried to throw well he managed to throw the like the seeds over the prison wall but uh, since he had a constant surveillance three guards were like instant instantly like trying to subdue him uh, and Matti Hapoja had the shank a prison shank so he stabbed one guard to death this guard died in the 1894 his name was Juho Rosted and uh, there were two like uh, three guards first so he stabbed two more 
One was uh, like uh, non-fatally wounded, but so badly wounded that he couldn't move. I don't know how bad the uh, step was for the third one, but um, it was still that Matti could move freely because when he went to the fourth guard, he was like just said that I won't stab you because you have been good to me and the other inmates. So he Matti Hapoja went to a, like a diner full of uh, like other inmates and when the other inmates saw that he was covered in blood and had a knife in his hand they were of course they were like uh, afraid that Matti is going to starting to stab the people there but uh, what Matti did was uh, that he was going to play his old trick again so but this time he yelled at the people that I will show you how to unlive yourself and well he had a knife and he tried to target his heart he uh, tried to target it seven times but he missed again he missed his heart and he was pretty wounded after that and he spent two weeks in the infirmary of the like the the prison and then when he was uh, fit uh, to leave he was put to like a solitary hold and in the solitary hold when Matti got there uh, he was still keen on the unliving thing so uh, he had these socks that uh, Matilda Reed had gifted her, the noble woman who tried to convert prisoners to Christianity. So um, Matti made like yarns out of uh, the the socks, and he made a rope. There was one prison guard outside the his door he maybe heard something he heard voices but maybe he didn't care because he had his uh, fellow uh, guards killed or wounded but uh, but he said he heard noises and didn't care about it pretty much but um, he still maintained that he didn't know that there was unliving unliving thing happening so Matti Haapoja like um, he's like or he's like ended there through the unliving thing and this was 1895 and he used the rope and that's about it what happened to Matti Haapoja his body was displayed 100 years in a Finnish uh, crime museum and like uh, it was taken down 1992 so I would have visited my relatives skeleton if I like uh, would have been uh, old enough I've, I've been born like uh, 1989 on the New Year's Eve so I was too so I wouldn't have remembered it if uh, even I saw it but that is the Finland's version of Jack the Ripper a serial killer who lived in the same time and my relative so we'll leave it at that so thank you if you want any more information or just to talk to a relative with uh, of a serial killer with the same diagnosis of a psychosis oriented personality disorder and with the ADHD probably uh, you can talk to me about anything so leave a comment if you want 
and thank you goodbye